We're looking at Mark's gospel, chapter number 5. I didn't want to shock you. We're looking at verses 22 through verse number 43. Don't worry, I'm not going to read all of that. I'm just going to read verse number 22. Mark's gospel, chapter number 5, and verse number 22. And behold... There cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet. Now I want you to know that in every situation in life, in every situation that you face in life, especially the big ones, there will be a moment where your response sometimes will make a difference in the outcome. Sometimes it won't, but it will always make a difference in you. In Mark chapter number 5, Jesus is doing what Jesus does. He is being followed by a multitude. Uh, he is teaching and preaching. He is healing sick and working miracles. He is manifesting God uh, in human flesh. And this man, this ruler of the synagogue has a daughter who's laying at home dying. Probably already dead by the time he gets to Jesus. And he asks Jesus to come uh, to his house. Now let me just stop right here and say he was the ruler of the synagogue. We'd put it like this. His pastor down there at the church and he knew what God could and had done for him at the church house but he had something bigger than that and he wasn't asking God to show up at the church he is asking God to come to his house he said I know you're at your house but I need you to come to my house and we as God's people need to get back to not just meeting not just having not just worshiping and spending fellowship time with God at his house but we ought to desire for him to be at our house I promise you things will be a lot different when you get the Lord at your house he asked him to come and heal his daughter as we go through the story you'll find out by the end hallelujah he walks right in there where she's dead uh, takes her by the hand tells her to arise she resurrects from the dead sets up and the passage closes with them telling her to give her something to eat and all the people were amazed. Just imagine how many folk would be amazed in your neighborhood and mine if we'd get Jesus down there at our house. I like to say this. Where I'm from, uh, Blakely's funeral home is the top funeral home. And sometime when I'm preaching this, I say that two of the Blakely's men were standing outside the house ready to pick up the body. One of the older funeral home guys and one of the younger. And here comes Jesus and he walks in the door and the older guy looks at the younger and says, well load the stuff up. Because when Jesus shows up, he'll mess up funerals. He'll mess up the devil's plan. He'll take sinners and turn them into saints. He'll make everything different. I'm glad we serve a God who's in the difference making business. But I don't want to look at just the first part or the miracle part. What I want to look is what happened from between the time he came to Jesus and the time Jesus worked a miracle in his life. Because I believe as you journey from when you got born again, blood was saved by grace through faith until God delivers us before his his own throne. I, I believe in that journey that you will face moments. You will have moments that will make all the difference in your life. And for a few minutes tonight, I want to preach on that thought. Moments that make the difference. J. Iris in verse 22, the pastor down there at the synagogue uh, comes to Jesus and when he saw Jesus, here's his first moment, when he saw Jesus, he's got a moment. How will he respond? He responds by submitting to Jesus. I'm going to tell you one of the moments that makes all the difference is when you submit to Jesus. When he saw him, uh, his ruler 
were down there at the synagogue. He had a title and a position and he had power. But when he saw him, he submitted all of that to Jesus and he fell at his feet. He is submitted to the authority of Jesus. He said, no matter how much power I have, no matter how much authority you've given me down there at your synagogue, I'm here to tell you I don't have anything on you. I'm giving it all to you. I'm uh, Basically what he's doing, he said, I'm submitting to your lordship. I'm submitting to your authority. I'm submitting to your power. I'm submitting to your uh, Godhead. I'm submitting to you. Now I'm going to give you a, a little thought here. I've heard all my life that we ought to surrender to Jesus, and we should. But I like to use the word submit. I believe submits more than surrender. Back one uh, New Year's Eve, I was preaching in South Carolina, the first message kickoff, and I had to be in North Carolina about two and a half hours away at 11.15 to preach the final message of a watch night service. Well, I preached quick and fast and early, and then uh, they had a little meal, and they all got to talking to me I wasn't doing any talking my brother-in-law my wife's brother was with us and uh, uh, he finally punched me and said if we're going to be in the Indian trail at 11.15 we've got to go and got to go now so we jumped in the car and time was clicking away I had a 1985 Buick LeSabre four door and I had her skint back but I was just touching the high spots I was on the last straight away and I was making a right hand turn uh, about to make a right hand turn to go down to the church and all of a sudden I saw blue lights so I pulled over to the side done all that that I do being in law enforcement I pull over side put her in drive cut her off cut the inside lights off I'm sitting there with my hands up like this when he walks up he asked for my license registration told me I was speeding and I was and uh, uh, he said uh, he said uh, why are you in such a hurry I said, well, I've got to be down here at the Central Baptist Church at 1115. And he looked in. He said, you the preacher? I said, I am. He said, my sister goes to that church. She's trying to get me to come down there and hear you. I'm going to let you go because if I write you a ticket, I'll never be able to talk to my sister again. See, when those blue lights came on, I surrendered. I pulled right, I immediately pulled right over to the side of the road. But he got back in his car, cut his blue lights off, fell out fly behind me and took off. I turned down that road to the church. I looked in the rear view, looked in the side view, with no cars behind me. I stomped her back down because I'd only surrendered. When you get submitted uh, you run the speed limit whether the police is there, whether the radar detector's bleaking or not uh, you stay on that and when you submit to the Lord uh, you're submitted to Him when you need Him. You're submitted to Him when everything's going well. You're submitted to His authority, His control in your life. He submitted to His authority. What's verse number 23? He besought Him greatly saying my little daughter lieth at the point of death. Watch this. I pray thee come and lay thy hands on her. He submitted to not only his authority but his action. He understood that it wasn't him that could tell God what to do. We got this idea that God's lurch. You young folk have to Google that. You won't know who lurch is. But he was the butler for the Adams family and we think we can go ring those golden bells or ring that prayer bell and he'll show up and say you rang and do whatever we tell him but not when you submit it oh uh, Jairus had submitted uh, to his action he knew if God didn't come uh, down there to his house that his daughter would stay dead he realized that it was what God was doing and not what Jairus could do it was how God wanted to do it it's not always easy to submit to the action of the Lord but if you're going to make a difference in your outcome uh, if you're going to make a difference in your life you had to submit to his action. He submitted to his authority. He submitted to his action. What's the last sentence of verse 23? That she may be healed and she shall live. 
He submitted to Jesus' ability. He said, now ain't no doctor can do anything. All our praying won't do anything. We can't anoint her of oil and uh, get Benny Hinn or one of them to come down there. But if you'll come down there and lay your hands on her, she will be healed because he knew God was able. How many tonight know that we still serve a God who's able? He's able. Thank God our God is still able. You may think some time he's not able got good news for you he's still able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think you can't ask it and you can't think it and get out of the realm of his ability I'm glad my God I don't know if that's a helping you tonight but it's a helping me because I was a thinking when they told me that boy would never walk that boy would never talk and he knows the words of that first song hallelujah him and mama sing it regular that's why he wanted to get up here and it seemed like Jesus come by and said I told you you can count on me I'm still able that boy ain't gone too far mama that grandkid ain't too deep in sin it ain't too bad for him it's not too far gone for him I'm glad hallelujah if he ever steps in the situation and lays his hands on it somebody's getting healed and somebody is a coming to life. He's able. He's able. He's able. Submitted to his ability. Watch what happens. And Jesus said nothing. He didn't say a word to him. There's Jay Iris laying down there. He's probably got up on his knees. He's beseeching, begging him. Please come to my house. Jesus said, oh, starts going with him. Hallelujah. They walk in stride and stride together. He's glad now that he submitted to the Lord. Cause I, now I'm not saying the Lord wasn't coming by his house, but he didn't know he was. And he went to where somebody ought to just bring it to the Lord tonight and lay it down at his feet, submit it to him, and say, I'm going to just trust your authority. I'm going to trust your action. I'm going to trust your ability. And you may walk out of here and God just be walking right to where you need him to be, right to your burden, right to your job right to your problem right to your heartache right, right there to your house where you need him and Jesus went with him can you imagine I can almost see now I'm going to give you a little weaver's commentary country commentary it ain't in your King James Bible I'm not adding to the Bible I'm just telling you what I see when I read the Bible when he steps off there that first step with Jairus I see a smile come on his face his heart starts beating and he knows way down deep on the inside that no matter what the doctor said, everything's going to be all right. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a woman's had an issue of blood for 12 years. She's unclean. She, whatever thing she touches is unclean. Everything she sets down on, sets down on is unclean. She's not supposed to be around anybody. She's not welcome at the synagogue. She's not welcome on the mar at the marketplace. She's not even supposed to be here. And she slips through, I believe, got down on her hands and knees and crawled through that crowd because she had said, if I could just touch his clothes, if I could just get to him. And she reaches through and touches him and Jesus stops dead in his tracks. Here's another moment in Jairus' life. It was the moment when he submitted. Now here's the moment when he must stay with Jesus. Because Jesus stops and says, who touched me? And the disciples said, everybody's touching you. They're banging up against you. They're thronging you. Well, how do we know who touched you? And if you go over to Luke's account, Luke says that the Lord said, somebody at somebody in Luke's accounts capitalized. He said, somebody touch me. You feel like a nobody tonight? I'll tell you how to become a somebody. You just touch Jesus. That word somebody is only used two times in your King James Bible. It's used, I believe it's action, Acts chapter number four, about a man named Theodos. Theodos uh, boasted himself to be somebody. He got 400 men to follow him. The Bible said that he came to naught. Naught's not just nothing. Naught's not just 
zero. It's a zero with the rim knocked off. Hallelujah. He came to naught. But over there in Luke's gospel about this woman with the issue of blood, she touched Jesus. Jesus said, somebody touch me. A nobody, an outcast. No matter who you are, you get to him. He's in the making. Somebody's out of nobody business. Hallelujah. But he stops and deals with this woman. Now here's the moment in Jairus' life. He was going with me and now he's taking care of her and she's unclean. I'm a pastor down there at the synagogue. I read 10 chapters a day. I double tithe on everything I've got. I've been serving God all of my life. This woman not even allowed at the church. This woman not even allowed at the marketplace. Her family can't even be around her. They all would be unclean. And he gonna stop. I know I see the spiritual halos pop out on your head. I know you ain't never thought it. Why is God being so good to them over there? Why is God taking care of them? And we over here just flopping around like a fish out of water. It don't seem like God's doing anything. i tell you what that is. That's the moment. Are you going to stay with Jesus during the delays? Oh, Jesus. Let me just go ahead and give you a spoiler alert. When Jesus stepped off with Jairus and went with him, that daughter was alive no matter how long her pulse had stopped, her heart had quit beating. That miracle was worked the minute Jesus stepped off with Jairus. But if Jairus, wonder what Jesus would have did if Jairus had said, well, if you're going to deal with them and if you're going to be like that and be good to her and you're going to take care of her, I just guess I don't need you. I'll just go on back to the house and it went back to the house maybe without Jesus and that daughter had still been dead when he got there but he didn't he just stayed he just waited patiently now I'm going to go ahead and be transparent tonight if God tells me something and I know God said it I have almost no problem believing him I don't have any problem I got up one morning told my wife pack the bags we're moving we're going in full-time evangelism. We didn't have a house to move to. A car had 236,000 miles on it. We didn't have a big bank account. And I didn't have a meeting one, not a one, not, not lead in silent prayer over a vacation Bible school snack for four, the first four months. So when I know Lord says that, I don't have much trouble believing, hardly any. But you know what I have trouble with? Waiting. Because me and my wife going through a couple things right now. We've been waiting. And I'm going to just be honest with you. It ain't been easy. And I probably ain't got a hundred on the scorecard for how I've been waiting. The psalmist David said, I waited patiently on the Lord. I ain't got there yet. I've been a waiting and a praying and a pacing back and forth and a wondering, is this the call? Is this going to be the one? Is this going to be the situation? But I'm a waiting. I'm staying with Jesus. I don't care how long it takes. I don't come too far to turn back now. I've got too much invested, if you will. I'm all in. He's my everything. I ain't got, where are you going to go back to? I don't know about you. I ain't got nothing to go back to. To. Is he going to go back and tell his wife he just give up on it and let his daughter die? Are we going to quit and let our children go to hell? Are we just going to give up because it's not happening like we think it ought to happen? Or are we just going to say no matter how long it takes, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how long it gets, I think I'll just stay with Jesus. Stayed with Jesus during the delays. Jesus heals this woman and then saves this woman. And he's not quite finished telling her that she has been made whole. Watch verse 35. While he yet spake, Jesus is still talking to the woman. There came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain, we say, now these are his friends and his family. They came from his house. These are his buddies. They said, thy daughter is dead. You won't talk about getting dark. Now, I've not been there. But I've been around a lot of folks who've had to bury a child. And I don't know, I, just outside looking in, I don't know how it could get much darker. Now, you talk about engulfed in darkness. This is his friends and his family. Just point blank, didn't soften it up a bit. Just said, she's dead. Darkness must have engulfed him all around. 
what old Jairus do when the darkness it amazes me that when tragedy hits like that and the darkness engulfs people it amazes me I'm talking about God's people saved by the grace of God how many of them head for the hills run back to where God found them try to dig a grave and act like it did again out there floundering around out there doing a bunch of foolishness I don't know exactly what J. Iris did but I like to thank him Weaver's country commentary they come up to him and said thy daughter's dead and J. Iris stepped over to Toward Jesus. All he knew is he went with me. He started toward the house. I done come this far. I done stayed. Why help this woman? If he can heal up her uh, condition, she done spent everything she had on doctors and they couldn't do it. I know the doctors can't do it. I know the church can't do it as far as the church people. I think I'll just slide up closer to him. Where I'm from, we call it scooching up. Oh, Jay Ira said, that, they said, that dog daughter's dead. I believe he just scooched up a little closer to Jesus and stood in the darkness because he believed uh, that standing somewhere in the shadows he may have been so heavy that he couldn't feel him and he couldn't find him. He may have not knew if he even had his mind on him uh, but he thought he's got, he's around here somewhere. Hallelujah. I'm going to just keep scooching up and keep scooching up no matter how dark it is. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm not afraid of the dark like if you cut all the lights out, I panic. But I don't like the dark. One of the reasons is you can't see. I'm talking about darkness that you can't see. I don't like the dark. But I do a little better in the dark if I got somebody with me. Pyre goes out in the house and we hunting some candles. I latch on. My wife can tell you, if we're going to move around, I mean, I can trip and peel my little toe all the way back with all the lights in the house on. I sure enough can do it when it's dark. So she starts through the house. I just latch on. And Bryce is blind, but basically in one eye and can't have see out of the other. And that fella can walk around in the house and his eyes ain't even open from sleep. And he don't seem ever trip over nothing. So sometime in the dark when he go to walking, I just latch on. That's almost what J. Iris, I think, did here. It's too dark to get to the house. It's too dark to keep going. It's too dark. I think I'll just latch on to him. And if he stands here... I'll die standing here, but I'll die holding on to him. I ain't letting go of him no matter how dark it is, no matter how long it takes. I'll just hold on to him. He stayed with Jesus during his delay. He stayed with Jesus during, during his darkness. What's 35 again? They said, thy, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any father? This is his friends. And his family. So there ain't no need to bother Jesus. Ain't no need to stay with Jesus now. It's all over. It's ruined your life. It, he didn't do what you thought he was going to do. You might as well quit on Jesus. Can you imagine how discouraging that is? I don't know if you ever had somebody true to you stab you in the back and turn against you. That's discouraging. I just see him scooch up a little closer. I ain't a letting you go. He like a, I ain't, a, I'm just making this comparison. He's like Jacob, a wrestling with the Lord in the Old Testament. I ain't letting you go. You may break my hips. You may smother me. You may choke me to death. But I'm dying hanging on to you. I'm so down so low. It's so dark where I'm at. You've all I got. I ain't a running out on you now. I ain't a waving the white flag. I ain't a giving up. I ain't a quitting. I'm just hanging on to him. I'm staying with him. When the family says you ought to give that up. When the family says it ain't worth it. When your friends turn on you. When they could go a different way. When they compromise, water it down, and leave the back. Jesus of the Bible you say what are you going to do I'm hanging on to him I'm staying with him he's been too good to me for me to let go now hallelujah those moments those moments he, st he, he submitted to Jesus he stayed with Jesus I give you this I'm finished watch now best I can tell in the text Jesus hadn't said a word to him he begged and prayed and asked Jesus to come with him. 
And the Bible just said Jesus went with him and stopped. And now, let me just tell you how close the Lord is in your delays and in your darkness and in your discouragement. See, some preachers tell you God's done with you. Let's see. Let's see what he does here. As soon, verse 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken. He's close enough, Jairus was close enough to him and Jesus was close enough to Jairus that while he was speaking to this woman and saving her and telling her she's not only healed but she's whole inside and out, he still could hear what they were saying. Aren't you glad, hallelujah, we ain't got to stand in line to talk to our God uh, that when he's down there helping her, he can hear what's going on at your house. He ain't lost. He ain't got to play catch up. He ain't got to come in. Somebody say, fill me in on the details. Uh, he ain't got to have somebody to write notes for him. He's right. Why he yet spake in verse 35. And as soon as he heard uh, what their word was, he turns to Jacob. I almost see him turn to Jay Iris because Jay Iris is hanging on to him. You ever submit to him, he'll be all you have. You won't even think about leaving. You'll just think about trying to get closer. Trying to get closer. He turns to J. Iris. Watch it. Verse number 36. I'm going to just preach it like Jesus said it. He turns to J. Iris. First words he ever spoke as far as we know to J. Iris. He said, be not afraid. Watch this. Only believe. Now, I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed, but I know what only means. He didn't tell him to give more money. He didn't tell him to fast and pray. He didn't tell him to go read 10 chapters. He didn't tell him to sow some seed faith. He didn't tell him to do anything but what he had already been doing. See, he is a believing when he left the house and went to hunt G, went to come to Jesus. He is a believing when they stepped off there together. He is a believing when he stayed uh, when everybody else was telling him to leave. He is believing. And Jesus basically turns to him now and said, it's working so far. Don't change now if faith brought me this far why would I go by works why would I want something else I think I'll just ride on faith hallelujah he said be not afraid only believe that may not have been exactly what J. Iris was wanting to hear but let me tell you what J. Iris this is his moment what's J. Iris going to do she going to say I ain't got nothing to believe in anymore I've got nothing to believe for anymore. No. You know what he's going to do? Now he's going to just side with Jesus. First thing he does, he sides with the Lord's word. He said, well, if that's what you say, do. Can you imagine when the military master by the name of Joshua stood the men up and said, here's how we're going to take Jericho, men. Oh, we're going to ram the, wall, the walls down. We're going to knock the gates off. We're going to go in there and stab three of them, cut off hit. No. We're going to march around it one time a day without saying anything. Wasn't no weavers in that group. <laughs> and on the seventh day, we're going to march around it seven times. We're not going to say anything. But when that last man clears that front gate, the priests are going to blow the trumpet and we're going to shout. The walls are going to come down and we're going to go in and take the city. Now, I don't know about you, but Joshua had been stabbing fear three of them, cutting off heads for 40 years. This ain't exactly what I thought he was going to say. But you know what they did? They said, well, I guess we'll just side with the word of God because we remember God said, as I was with Moses. I'll be with Joshua. So we'll decide. Jay Iris said it might not make a lot of sense to this crowd standing around. It may not make a lot of sense to the multitudes. It may not even make sense to those disciples who are with him. But you know what I'm going to do? I ain't going to get all tore up. I ain't going to have a panic attack. I ain't going to go to home, throw the covers over my head and give up on the world. I think I'll just believe that he's still able. I believe he's still able. I'll just believe. 
believe. I can't do anything else. I might well just believe. He sided with the Lord's word. We live in a day when it'll come uh, to in your life. If it hadn't already come in your life, are we going to side with the word of God? Uh, are we going to do it like God said? Are we going to twist it and change it? Could you imagine what some of them would have told him to do? You better get home and console your wife. You better get home and make funeral plans. You better get home and collect your insurance money so you can bury your daughter. That's what they'd have been thinking about. Jesus said, be not afraid. Only believe. Go back. Let your mind run back, Jairus, to when you asked me and besought me and begged me and prayed me and I stepped off there with you. When you want to give up and throw in the towel and you just don't want to believe, go back to where he found you and what he did for you and how far he brought you. You'll just side with the word of God. What J. Iris was saying here is I don't care what he says. I'm going to do it. No matter what anybody else thinks. He sided with the word of the Lord. Look at it again in verse number 39. Jesus comes to the house in verse 38. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, now Jesus is going to put J. Iris to the test because a faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. J. Iris is a believing. He's still walking with Jesus. He's staying right there. He's still hanging on. And Jesus walks into all his friends and family and says, why make you this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead. Let me just stop right here and tell you in Bible times, they knew dead. They seen it every day. They knew dead. They knew she's dead. But Jesus said, she's not dead. She's sleeping. Now let me tell you this. According to our New Testament, sinners die. Saints fall asleep. She's not dead. She's just sleeping. Well, let's see how his friends and family reacted. Verse 40. And they laughed him to scorn. They did. You don't see J. Iris laughing. He said, whatever he said, I'm just going to tell you, I'm no super saint. I'm not trying to act like I'm all spiritual. But if that King James Bible said that Jonah swallowed the whale, I'd go all over the southeast preaching that Jonah swallowed a whale. I wouldn't have any problem with it. Make fun of me, laugh at me if you want to, because I remember the day when I decided, if you will, my moment came and I was just going to side with the word of God. I wasn't changing his word. I wasn't adding to it. I wasn't taking away from it when I didn't understand it when I couldn't figure it out I just siding with his word and they laughed him to scorn J. Iris ain't laughing what's this verse 40 but when he had put them all out he said all right all you baggage uh, burdens on J. Iris all you hanging on him trying to discourage him all you ain't helping him to follow me you got to go What's J. Iris going to do now? He's throwing his friends and family out of his house. J. Iris going to side with Jesus. Not only going to side with Jesus' word, now he's going to side with Jesus' will. I got news for you. Everybody in your life right now, if you serve God and believe God, they won't be in your life when this thing's over. He'll move some people out. He'll bring some new people in. I remember when I was going through a time, they wouldn't let me preach at the nursing home or the jailhouse. I couldn't get an invitation to preach nowhere. My friends wouldn't help me. Nobody would preach. And my good help me told me, quit fretting about it. God's fixing to put you with a brand new group of preachers. And I hardly ever preach for them I started out with anymore. Just about everybody I preach for now is somebody that when I started at that moment, that moment, I said, well, that's what I'm going to do. I guess I'll just believe God. I didn't have nothing else to do. If you'll just submit it all to him, you won't have a lot of options. It's a lot easier to follow him when you ain't got nobody else to follow. It's a lot easier to obey him when you don't have anybody else to obey. If you'll get all that thing submitted to him, you won't have as much trouble in the Christian life. When they all made fun of him, Jesus said they got to go. Ain't some folk in your life going to have to go. Don't be 
beat yourself to death trying to keep them in your life when you say if it's between you and him bye bye I can almost see J. Iris opening the door and telling them do whatever he said at my house you do what you want to it's yours but J. Iris said at this house we're gonna serve the Lord as for me if you don't serve the Lord here you'll have to find another place to live amen but if you're gonna live here we're serving the Lord see your way out praise God see your way out have a good life I'm going with him I'm going with his will for my life what's this that I'm finished when he put them all out he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him that's Peter James and John started with a multitude but he left the multitude had 12 disciples but only let three of them go he runs everybody out of the house and then he takes I have the vision in my mind that he got mama by the hand he got J. Iris by the hand looked at them three disciples gave them the head nod and he took them in there I like to say it like a, he's taking them in the bonus blessings room the bonus blessings room ain't for the multitude it ain't for them skeptics it's not for them walking on the rope close to the world got enough God to go to heaven it takes something special to go into the bonus room he takes them and he steps in that room J. Iris is not trying to pull away. J. Iris is not saying, no, I can't go in there and look at my dead daughter now, Lord. That's you asking too much of me. I can't go in that room where my daughter laying dead. You know what it does? According to the text, he taketh him. He just leads him. And J. Iris said, uh, I'm going to decide with God's way. Yeah. My way didn't work when she was sick. So I'll just, my way didn't work when I was in sin. My way didn't work when I tried to figure it out according to my human abilities. So I think I'll just side with him in his way. I'll just go his way. Whatever his way is, that's what I'm going to do. Because if you want to get to the real deep place, the, I, like I said, I call it the bonus blessing. I don't know about you, but I don't want to hear it. I'm not going to sing build me a cabin in the corner of glory land. I want everything Jesus died and was buried and rose again to give me. I want it all. And if you don't want yours, get my address before I leave tonight and to pray that God send me whatever you don't want. So I want to, and, and I just want you to understand this. I want to go all the way. Yeah. I want to get all in. Yeah. I want to take the life vest off, pull off the swimmies, get out of the shallow end, the kiddie pool. And do like I used to do when I swim. Now I'm way too spiritual to go swimming now. But when I was young and swam, I never walked down on the steps and I see them do it. You know how I got in a poo? In the deepest part of it, not the three foot. I went for the deepest part right off the bat. And I say tonight, there's somebody who needs to pull the swimmies off get out of the shallow end uh, and take a run and go and just jump out here in the deep end all by yourself no, not knowing if you're going to sink or swim uh, just believe in him cause tonight is somebody's moment and I say please for God's sake and yours uh, don't miss your moment don't miss your moment don't miss your moment it's your moment come get in the bonus room don't miss your moment don't miss your moment let's bow for prayer Father help us tonight if this is our moment to submit to you to stay with you to side with you help us oh God not to miss our moment don't miss your moment don't miss your moment grant it to be so I pray for Jesus sake the pastor's coming did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.